We are Sorted, a group of mates from London exploring the newest and best in the world of food whilst trying to have a few laughs along the way. <laughs> we've got chefs, we've got normal, and a whole world of stuff for you to explore, but everything we do starts with you. It's fridge cam time, I'm Ben, and this is Mike. And it's very apparent that everyone loves it when we get our two chefs to test stuff, and this has been massively requested by you guys. Thanks for your help on Twitter. Right, so today, kind of excited, this face might say otherwise, because we're going to experiment with a pressure cooker and cook a bunch of different things, and all the suggestions have come from you guys. My limited knowledge of pressure cookers is that they cook things much faster, and they save energy and money because of the reduced cooking time, and you can use cheaper ingredients and cuts of meat in them. Question is, how does it compare to if we were to cook it traditionally, and is it even worth it? I actually haven't ever used a pressure cooker. You've never used a pressure cooker? <laughs> nope. I say that in such surprise as if I always use them, which is a lie. I think I've only used it twice. I used to be scared of them. Dish one, pulled pork. So a hunk of pork shoulder, and for this one, not going to pre-cook anything, just throw it all in and see what happens. That sounds delicious, Ben. Are we not even going to brown it? Not this time, I don't think so. You can do. Yeah, that's fine. You'll need marmalade, beer, oregano, dried garlic, onion granules, smoked paprika, salt. How long would you cook a chunk of pork shoulder like that, typically, if you were braising it? Two and a half to three hours. Should we give it an hour? So the logic here is you're cooking in liquid, but the liquid is in steam form and the steam is under pressure because it's tightened and locked in, completely sealed, and that means the temperature of the steam goes even higher than 100 degrees where it would normally evaporate off. And in theory, for every 10 degrees it increases, you halve the cooking time. Don't put your hand near the steam, obviously, but as pressure increases, the valve or the indicator will rise and you've got high pressure, low pressure, it's pretty much as simple as that, two different lines. Oh my God, it's more exciting than watching paint dry. <laughs> but only just. You jumped back there. Sorry, yeah, I was worried about him. One hour, pull pork, pressure released. We're looking for something that pulls apart easily. I would also hope that it pulls apart and isn't dry on the inside. Oh no. Oh. no. It's at the tender stage but it's not pulling. not pulling. So the edge bits, but it's kind of already fallen off and are separate, those are good, but kind of the center and the main body of the chunk of meat, not yet there. Let's give that one a bit longer. The edges were nearly there before, but this is take two. That's looking pretty good. Now, do we stress, at this point, if you were doing this by braising it in the oven nice and slow or on the hob for three hours, you would then want to take the pork out and reduce all of the sauces down so you get a sticky glaze. So we gave that another 15 minutes, an hour and 15 minutes total. Not disintegrating into just mush, you've still got those, those fibrous strands. It's definitely not dry. So no pre-searing, we gave it an hour and 15. I reckon an hour and 10 if we hadn't opened it after the hour. Yeah, yeah perhaps. Let's have a look. Great. Loads of flavour. I wouldn't say it's any different to the pulled pork that you cook for three hours and it's less than half the time. Also, if you're thinking kind of midweek, I feel like you could cook that big chunk of pork and use some of it today and use some of it tomorrow or the day after in a completely different dish with tacos, with beans, whatever. I, you're right, Mike. Pulled pork becomes midweek. Dish two, oxtail. Ben put out a tweet and oxtail was the most requested dish to do in a pressure cooker. That, that's the tail of an ox and then they just go pow, pow, pow and you end up with yummy. We're gonna do it with some Korean flavors at high pressure and we're aiming for 45 minutes. For the oxtail, we're gonna sear it really quickly in hot oil before adding our liquid, which is honey, soy sauce, rice wine, chili paste, garlic and ginger. And a pear! And a pear! Yeah. And a pear! <laughs> Once the chunks of oxtail have been seared, drain off any excess fat, and in with all of those wonderful flavours. Clamp it, pressurise it, 45 minutes. Don't look into the steam, <laughs> look into the steam, look into the steam, burn your eye. That lets the steam out. If the heat is too high, there will be a constant loud hissing sound. Oh! Oh! Did you get it? Did you get that? Did you get it? <laughs> <laughs> we have three different pressure cookers, and this so far, this one. You like the pop. Way more indicator. fun. This one's way, way more fun. This is a real experiment because I've never cooked oxtail at home. I've only ever cooked it 
in restaurants and hotels. Would I bother at home? I'm really excited. And if it does go the same way as the pulled pork, I'm leaving. I don't care about the second half of this video. They look a bit shriveled. So it's coming away from that middle bit nicely, and these little nuggets of deliciousness. I feel like that could have had a bit more time, but I think that's pretty good going. I think it's a success, but could probably do with some more experimentation. I don't know enough about Oxtail to know if this is 70% or 90% of the way there, but it tastes great and it's a very cheap cut of meat, and I think a talking point if you're gonna serve that to someone who also hasn't tried it. Dish three, potatoes. Now, I was once talking to the Potato Council and they were concerned because our generation don't eat enough potatoes anymore because they take too long to cook. 15, 20 minutes of boiling. More if what? you roast them. What do you mean they take too long to cook? Our generation... 15 they, minutes? They want, they want rice in 10 minutes, they want pasta in nine minutes. Potatoes take too long. We're gonna cook them in a pressure cooker. Six minutes. That's ridiculous. So I guess we're gonna compare these to boiled potatoes, or well, technically we're gonna steam these under pressure. Water in the bottom of the pressure cooker, new potatoes, I've just cut them in half in a steamer above it. There's another different one, so we'll keep an eye and see what happens on this one. I don't like this one, not a fan of this one. Ah! 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 The thing is with six minutes, like, a minute over is a really high percentage of overcooking, isn't it? Yep. Once the spuds are cooked, we're going to toss them in chives, mint and parsley, chopped up with a squeeze of lemon, glug of olive oil, salt and pepper. So release pressure quickly using the steam valve. Ooh, just. Just good or just under? I think just, just good. Well, like perfect, you mean? I think they might have worked, which is annoying. It bothers you, doesn't it? completely dairy-free, but I want them to be buttery on the inside like a good new potato. Ooh. Good well-seasoned potato. I wouldn't moan if it had another minute. I think it could have had another 30 seconds. Small one, perfect. The big one, you're right, another 30 seconds a minute, perhaps. What does that tell us? Same thing I've been saying for the last 10 years. I'm gonna cut things up, make sure they're all the same size so they cook evenly. Works though, isn't it? Six minutes. It does work. It does. You hate the I mean, oh. you hate the fact that this is work. Why, why do you hate it so much? I don't hate the fact that it worked. I just don't understand why you wouldn't you wouldn't have 15 minutes to cook potatoes. Recipe four is risotto. Potential game changer. The thing with risotto and the thing I love though is that gorgeous texture. And you get that by stirring it the whole time you cook it. This method supposedly about 10 minutes, and with a lot less of this. Butter, onion, in a pan, softened. Flavors we're adding, garlic, oregano, thyme, black pepper, into the softened onions. Rice in, wine in. So far, not a lot different to a normal risotto. Stock in twice as much as rice by volume. Stir and cook at pressure for seven minutes. Regular risotto, 30 to 40 minutes, usually. After seven minutes, release the pressure, take off the lid and give it a good stir and then we'll add in our peas, parmesan and cream cheese. Season to taste, fingers crossed, risotto. That is a big old, that is a ben sized portion of risotto. It looks a lot better now than when it first came out. It does look creamier. It's, again, like maybe 30 seconds more. The good thing about this one was it was seven minutes under pressure. When you take the lid off, you're then stirring it and you can go back on the hob for that extra 30 seconds on the hob so you can actually keep control of it. To put it in for eight minutes could be a bit risky because then you could lose the texture and the bite of the rice. I don't know whether risotto is one of those things that lots of people cook in a pressure cooker or whether you guys just suggest it because you know I love risotto, but lots of suggestions for it. And I absolutely would do that midweek. It's creamy. All the grains are like individual and just cooked. It's good. 
Dish five, poi lentils. These were massively requested, and I guess it's because they are the perfect midweek meal, apart from they take ages to cook. Yeah, and you also asked for different few flavour combinations, so we're going to do it with pancetta, leek and cider. Now here's the thing with legumes, so lentils, peas, beans, normally you'd have to soak them first. But with the lentils, they're going straight in dry, no soaking, with three times as much by volume for using cider. Under high pressure, 15 minutes. Now if I think back to when we were talking about gut biome and diversity, we were told we have to be eating more in the way of lentils and grains and beans, but they take 40, 50 minutes to cook. And if I can't be bothered with potatoes, I'm not doing that midweek. This could change that. I, like this, yeah. I haven't done one of those yet, have you noticed? Do you want to do one? The whole video, I haven't done this. Okay. Ah, don't put your face in it. <laughs> 15 minutes at high pressure, then a quick release, and then we will stir through fresh herbs, a little bit of lemon juice, and season to taste, if they're cooked. The leek has almost completely disintegrated, and the lentils, kind of saucy, spoonable, all still individual. I'd be super happy with that consistency. Definitely cooked. Delicious with the cider and smoked pancetta. Definitely cooked, but only just. Cider's you, really good. You, <laughs> you could give them another little minute or two. They wouldn't suffer from that, but actually, nothing wrong with that at all. That is definitely a pass in my eyes. Mm -hmm. Number six is dessert time, cheesecake. This was a suggestion from you guys on Twitter. Confused by it, apparently it works. How long does it take? In theory, no more than 10 minutes to get it into the cooker, and then 45 minutes. How long does a normal cheesecake take? About 10 minutes to get it into the oven, and then 45 minutes? Hmm. The logic here is... No, I'd say I'm confused by this one as well. <laughs> Funsies then, it's this, just funsies. This is like a New York style cheesecake yep. that you can do if you don't have an oven. <laughs> and just a stove top. If you do it in an oven, mm -hmm. our recipe, 50 minutes of baking, yeah. and then you open the oven door but leave it kind of just a jar with a tea towel to cool gently for another 50 minutes, and then you chill it. This will be 20 and 20. 20 and 20, that's rather the key. Than 50 and 50. I'm convinced, guys. And this is the face that says, exactly that. You're so, so hard to please. I've gone for ginger snaps and butter for our biscuity base. For our filling, we are going to use cream cheese, double cream, caster sugar, an egg, some flour, some vanilla extract, and that's it, even though the intonation was wrong. We're putting it all in a bowl and mixing it up to a smooth, cream cheesy mix. Cup of water, base, something for the cheesecake to sit on. Aluminium foil sling. All the cool kids are doing it. Lid on and cook under pressure. 20 minutes. Cheesecake's done, I'm gonna take it off and let it cool naturally. So it's got a pretty good wobble. It smells vanilla-y. Almost souffléed and not necessarily in a good way. We'll chill it and then we'll taste it. It's got a good wobble to it still. Let's, let's give it a bit of, a, bit of love. So it looks pretty neat and tidy. What is your idea of perfect baked cheesecake? Baked cheesecake. In a baked cheesecake, I like a slightly grainy texture on the outside and then a creamy texture in the middle. Mm. I'm pretty sure we're thinking the same things. Good biscuit base, good vanilla flavor. Slightly eggy. Definitely eggy. I don't think you'd want to serve this cheesecake. Mixed feelings about that one. Mm. Really easy, a fraction of time of cooking. Not any better, not even as good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say a fail. Six dishes, what have we learned? I guess I'm slightly converted into pressure cooking, um, especially since it's basically buying a saucepan and having an extra use for it. So there's really no reason not to get one if you wanna just cook slow cooked meats in half the time. I've always thought of meat when you think of a pressure cooker, but actually the recipe that probably impressed me most was the risotto. No, I completely agree. I think the risotto was banging. I think the potatoes in six or seven minutes was great. And I think the lentils in 15. I think those three were the ones that I'm more likely to use if I had one at home. It's weird that we both think those are the best ones when 
you just think of slow cooked meats. As ever, thank you for all of your suggestions. We did six of them, there were many more. Keep them coming in. But we enjoy playing around in the kitchen with new stuff and experimenting. If you want to see more of it, let us know what else we should be testing. Hopefully that hasn't ruined your opinion about these series. If you like them, keep liking the video. We'll know to make more and comment down below with the gadget, bit of equipment, thing that you'd love to see our chefs test next. And one extra post-it note, our amazing AM menu book is shipping next week. So those club members who have opted for the book, it's coming your way. If you haven't opted for the book, you've got one more week to do so. The link is down below. Go and get all the information. It's definitely worth having a look at. I had to go last time. I've got a dad joke, it is from Jamie, so I'm shunning all responsibility. However, what is the difference between roast beef and pea soup? No idea what's the difference between roast beef and pea soup. Anyone can roast beef. <laughs> that's, yeah, I got him. that's a silly yes. one. It's bad, isn't it? Terrible. As we mentioned, we don't just make top quality YouTube videos. No. We've built the Sorted Club, where we use the best things we've learned to create stuff that's hopefully interesting and useful to other food lovers. Check it out if you're interested. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in a few days. Yeah. Because it was no different. Out, enjoy your day, go to a musical, and then come back and press your cook. I have to be honest, I'm less keen on matinees, if that's what you're trying to do.